So what do you get when you take a distillery more known for their single malts, ask them to do a custom distillation with a mash bill that looks closer to a bourbon, age it for six years, and then bottle it 50%? You get a bottle of liquid gold, that's what you get. Hello and welcome to Lacorius George. My name is George, and today I'm going to be guiding all of you through my curiosities with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's release from Distillery G16, Thunderstorm in a Beehive. So this particular release is special for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it was released as part of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's festival releases. So every year, Scotland and all of the regions go through whiskey festivals. This was released as part of the Lowland Spirit Festival. Another special thing about this bottle is the mash bill I mentioned at the beginning. So Distillery G16, also Distillery 156 for those who are keeping track. It can get confusing, I know. Don't worry, Google it, you can find out everything there. They essentially did a custom distillation specifically for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So the mash bill, as I was mentioning at the beginning, is actually made up of 58% corn, 21% malted barley, and 21% unmalted rye. So that's much more like something you would find in a bourbon versus a scotch. And then when it came to aging this whiskey, they put it in a brand new charred oak barrel with toasted heads. That's almost unheard of. Most of the time with scotch whiskey, you will find that they use ex bourbon barrels or ex sherry barrels, ex wine barrels, something that has already had a liquid in it. So it takes all of those flavors from it. So this is just a completely different whiskey that you would find that normally would come out of Scotland. So all that being said, I'm very excited to give this a try and pop it open have a little taste. Let me read off the rest of the stats that are here on the bottle itself, and then we can dive into it. So as I mentioned, it's rare release from distillery G16. It's one of 1,300 barrels. The name is Thunderstorm in a Beehive. For those in the UK and other parts of the world, the name might be different. Um, I think it was Dark and Stormy Creme Brulee, if I remember correctly. Um, but in the US, it's Thunderstorm in a Beehive. So it is six years old. It's a single grain Scotch whiskey and it's from the Lowlands. As I did mention, it is bottled at 50% ABV and that is a nod to the bottled and bond bourbon that you'd find here in the States and the requirement that it is barreled exactly at 50% ABV. Flavor profile wise, it is coming to us out of the spicy and dry flavor profile. So we are gonna pop the top on this one. We're gonna get into it and actually start giving it a taste. So let's first take a look at the color. So hopefully you can see that pretty good on the cameras there. So it's a nice brownish color, a little amber. All right, pretty dark. Actually, for six years old, um, it's got some good color to it. So Scotch Malt Whiskey Society doesn't put anything into any of their releases. So this is straight out of the cask like this. So no filtering, no coloring. So that's all color there straight from that uh, charred brand new oak barrel. But it's a nice color going on. Actually, is the, what is that floating? Is that... You know, I think there's cork or something floating around in my drink. That's right. It's going to go down all the same pipe anyways. But yeah, so very nice color on it. You can tell it's got some of that stuff from the, the char and that oak barrel. Now if we get a swirl and give it a look at the legs, legs don't stay up too long. They're coming down pretty well, but you can tell. So it's not a super oily looking finish to it, but the legs are holding up pretty well. All right. And I also poured this and let it breathe a little bit. So we should get a good nose on it. So right off the bat, the nose smells exactly like a bourbon. Obviously with the mash bill, it's exactly like a bourbon. So you would expect it to smell like that, but it's just a little bit weird coming from a distillery over in Scotland that it, you would smell something that's like a bourbon. A lot of that nice creamy caramel smell, a lot of good sweetness out of there. So you're getting some of the rye smell out of here too. And the maltiness, you're really getting it's really kind of like a sweet maltiness that you're getting out of here. With that 21% malted barley in there, you can kind of get what it's like that. But I think with most bourbons, you would probably find that that 21% malted barley would be more like 21% wheat or something like that. So it's definitely a unique nose on it. Now let's go ahead and dive in and take a taste on the palate and see what that's like too. It's interesting, the spice hits up front on that first sip. Then the sweetness kind of comes afterwards. So it's kind of like a creamy caramel that comes afterwards. I'm surprised the spice hit me first. After the sweetness kind of goes away, then you can kind of taste that char that's on the barrel. The nice maltiness that I was smelling on the nose, it's continuing here on the palate. 
they're really good vanilla notes coming through now. Definitely getting some honey notes in there too. The closest thing that I can describe it to on the palette is, do you know those honey grams? Those little tiny teddy bear graham crackers, that honey grams, but you can get the cinnamon flavored ones. That's how I would describe this on the palette. So you get the graham crackery, you get the sweetness, you get a little bit of the spiciness on there too. It's really, really good. I know I used to eat those things by the handful. Yeah, you get some toffee notes out of there. This is just really, really pleasant. And it's super smooth. Like, I mean, it's it's 50%, so it's not a whopper of an ABV, but it's just so smooth in your mouth. Yeah, I can't get that image of those Teddy Grahams out of my head, because now that's all I can think about here. But this is really nice. Both the nose and the palate, super smooth. This is easily one of my favorite bottles that I got from the Scotch Mount Whiskey Society out of the festival releases. All right, I'm gonna add a little water to it. Not that this needs it at all, but I'm just gonna add a few drops to see what it does. Now with the water on the nose, it definitely lightens it up like usual, but there's a note on here. I almost feel like I'm smelling a tea bag, like some black tea or something like that. It's different. I'm not used to smelling it on a whiskey. It's pleasant for sure, but it's kind of got a florally note to it. All right, let's see what it does, what the water does on the palate. You know, there's almost a fruitiness that came out now after the water. So the taste is a little bit lighter, a little bit fruitier. Still got some nice sweetness in there, but it's changed a little bit. I'm also not quite getting as much of that graham cracker taste as I was before. I don't know, maybe it's just because of the dinner I had earlier today, so my taste buds are all messed up. But I'm almost getting like some tropical fruitiness out of this. Not a lot, but like I feel like a really little bit on the back. Personally, I think I prefer it without the water. But I could see some people, if you like a little bit of a lighter taste, a little fruitier taste, you might like to dilute it a little bit. From a finished perspective, it's not too long. Say short to medium. It's very nice though. After it's been sitting for a while, that spice kind of comes back. So I'm getting a lot more of that spice. A little bit of a cinnamon chili type of a spice going on. So let's go. So summary of what I think about the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's rare release from Distillery G16. So Thunderstorm and a Beehive. I absolutely love this thing. Right. Every single time I've opened this up and had a pour, I love it. It changes a little bit every time, but every single time I still love it the way that it changes. I also think this is kind of a whiskey that for those who don't normally drink scotch and normally will drink bourbon, this one might be for you. You guys might want to try this one because obviously it's got a bourbon style mash bill, but it's got a lot of that malted barley in there too. So you get a lot of the characteristics that you would normally get out of scotch. So some of that maltiness and the spice, it's just fantastic. And yes, I know that I feel like every single time I open up a bottle from Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, I think it's a hit. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. But I think I'm willing to put my money on this is the sleeper pick for the festival releases this year. I think I last looked and there were still bottles left. You know, we're two months after the festivals now. There's still bottles left on Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America's website. I think I'm gonna to have to pick up at least another bottle, if not two. I highly recommend trying to get yourself a taste of this, at least to, so that you can taste what it's like, because based on what they're saying, they're probably never gonna see this again, at least with a mash bill like this from that distillery. So like many of the releases that they put out from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, it's one of a kind. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this glass and try not to pour myself another one. Uh, but until next time, everyone stay curious and cheers.